Here we have a light bulb shining through a convex lens forming an image on the screen. An arrow is drawn on the bulb. An inverted image is projected onto the screen. Let's figure out what's going on. First we're going to measure the focal length. The bulb is set far away so the light will enter the lens parallel to the principal axis. We see the cone of light coming down to a point. And that's where we're going to measure the focal length from the lens to the point. I get about 15 centimeters for the focal length. Let's make a ray diagram for measuring the focal length. A light ray coming in parallel to the principal axis would refract here and then refract here again. But to keep things simple, we're just going to bank it bend once right at the center of the lens. So we say that the light ray that comes in parallel to the principal axis goes out through the focus. So all the light rays are coming in parallel to the principal axis because the bulb was so far away. We measured the focal length to be 15 centimeters. That distance is measured from the center of the lens. Now we're going back to the original setup and we have the bulb set up from the lens at a distance of 40 centimeters to the front of the bulb. That's the distance to the object. Now we'll draw a ray diagram. The convex lens, because the light can go both ways through it, has a focus on each side at 15 centimeters. We measured the distance of 40 centimeters to the object. In parallel, out through the focus. Now there's an infinite number of light rays that are spreading out from the tip of the arrow. All I need to do is draw one more ray, and that'll, I want to draw an easy one. So that'll be the one that goes from the tip of the arrow through the focus and then out parallel. If I put my eyes over here, I'm going to believe these light rays spread out from a point of intersection. And that's where I believe the image will be formed. In this case, there really is light here. It's a real image. If I put the screen here, light shines on it, just like we saw in the demonstration. Let's use the formula to calculate the distance to the image. We get 24 centimeters for a theoretical value. Now we measure the D to the image, the DI, and I get about 24 centimeters as well, maybe a little closer to 25. So I put down 24.5 centimeters for the experimental. It's a pretty close fit. Now the diagram should correspond with this. If that's 40 centimeters and this is 15, this should be 24. I measured it about 20 centimeters according to my scale, so I am off a little bit with the diagram. But the diagram should support the math if it was drawn to scale and it was perfect. On my light bulb, I measure the height of the object to be about 3.5 centimeters. We can use the height formula to calculate the height of the image. I get a height of negative 2.1 centimeters. Now, on the diagram, it is smaller. Let's see how it looks like in real life. Let's see here. It's about two centimeters. And that's how we can set up the lens to make a smaller image. Now we'll move things around and try to make a larger image. Now the arrow is being projected through the lens. We've moved the bulb closer to the lens and there we have the arrow projected larger on a screen far away. Let's take a look at the ray diagram for this. From the lens to the front of the bulb, I get about 17 centimeters for DO. I've changed the scale on the diagram because the length to the uh, image is much further. 
So we're going to put the object just past the focal length of 15 centimeters. It's at 17 centimeters. In parallel, out through the focus. Now you can see that the light ray going through the focus missed the lens. Don't worry about it. It's okay, there's a lot of other light rays that are going to strike that lens and form the image. We're only using the ones that are easy to draw. So now we're going to go out parallel. Now once again we can see that these light rays have traveled from what appears to be an intersection. My eyes would trace them back to a point and that's where I'm going to see the image. Let's calculate the DI. We get 127.5 centimeters using the formula. Experimentally, we get about 130 centimeters. We'll check out the height of the image now too, and I get about 25 centimeters. We'll use the height formula. It's the same height of uh, the arrow originally as it was on the last problem, 3.5 centimeters. And we get 26.25 centimeters, and that would be theoretical. And that compares really well to a distance to the image of 130 experimental and a, a height of the image of 25 experimental. And this seems to agree with the formula. And the diagram is pretty close too. Look how big the image is and look how far away it is. So this would work out if we used a graph paper and drew it out exactly. Uh, I'd like to point out also that this should be, using the formula, this should be a negative sign because this is upside down. So it's a negative height versus the positive height on the object. So this is all working out pretty well.